A man was asleep in his bed only to wake up to being shot several times through his bedroom window. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. What police are using to search for that suspect? Good morning, we're taking a step back in time and this morning on GMSA at six o'clock. Stick around because we're at the chuck wagon here. So breakfast tacos and some delicious coffee coming up. And we had an interesting night here in South Texas. Sleet, snow, weird white stuff, all sorts of craziness. My Azure Thursday forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And if you blinked, you missed it. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is February 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Hopefully you were up late enough to see some of that snow and grapple and whatever sleep that came down. I was asleep and I woke up to video of it. Yeah, we both missed it last night. Mike, were you up or did you see the leftovers this morning? Just saw the pictures of it. Kind of neat, you know, we, we were talking neat. about. very yeah. neat. But yes. no school delays, no, major no, 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 road no. issues to report anywhere in our region, right? Nope, it was uh, just because Sarah and uh, Spivey and I yesterday were talking about it and it was just going to be this brief little, you know, bit of energy coming on through here, a little bit of snow or the, the grapple or something like that, that that moved on through. And temperatures, uh, even though it was chilly yesterday, the ground temperatures were very, very warm. And so anything that felt basically, you know, for the most part, melted on contact. And it was late last night. Now the skies have cleared on out, and we have got uh, gonna, going to have a good looking sunrise looking off to the east right there. Still at uh, freezing here in town. First time we've hit freezing since going back into December. Of course, we didn't hit it officially at the airport in January. 24 lost Maples, 35 Canyon Lake, 31 in New Braunfels, and 29 right now in Pleasanton. And then it's the wind chill. 23 is what it feels like right now. 16 lost Maples and 24 down down the road at Stinson. Not much of a breeze, but when you have these cold temperatures, it doesn't take much at all. And mountain cedars on the high side. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when the uh, update account comes out in about an hour. Mold should be dropping down, hopefully, with the uh, drier air in place. Temperatures, I think we dropped down a couple of more notches this morning. And then we're going to have lots of sunshine throughout the day. It's going to be a good looking day, but it's going to be jacket and coat weather all day long. We'll make it up to about 50 today at noon and then continue and top out at 55. So about 10 degrees below normal. But again, a nice looking day. Now temperature is going to cool off very quickly again tonight. Night. Now the cold start tomorrow, but even warmer. Then we head into a, a nice, pleasant weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic and Officer Nick Solis, and it's been fairly quiet on the road so far this morning. And still the case? Yeah, we got one accident on uh, side streets, but on major highways, things are looking good, Mike. I I, I'm, I am surprised, I'll be honest. Coming in today, I thought I was going to have a little bit of a busier morning. Good news, I'm not. But we do have this accident here. Broadway and East Grayson Street. Looks like it's a, a disabled vehicle on the roadway. SAPD is on scene and hopefully they get that cleared up soon. But accident there. Taking a look at some drive times. If you're 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, it looks like it's 16 minutes. And if you're 35 southbound from Loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, so still very good drive times there. All right, trans guy, 35 and 37. Traffic starting to pick up a little bit. 281 at Sprucewood. Things look very light there. And uh, let's see what we have. 281 at Grayson, where that accident is. Um, things are looking good on the main highways. Uh, 410 and Austin Highway on the northeast side looking great as well. Well, I hope everyone's having a good morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Developing now, a bullet woke up one northeast I-18 this morning after someone shot right through his window. It happened at an apartment complex in the 11,300 block of Roselle Street. That's near Wurzbach Parkway and Perrin Beidel. Our Sarah Costa has been live at the complex all morning and has an update in the 6 o'clock hour. Sarah, do you have any new information about that victim yet? Yes, we just did get it confirmed that that victim is actually a teenager, an 18 year old male who was asleep. Uh, you can actually see this window right behind me. Police have since cleared the scene, clearing the tape and wrapping up out here. But that window where you can see that window screen up earlier, you could see the bullet holes through it, about seven to eight bullet holes through that window. And that's where that 18 year old male was sleeping when someone shot through that window where we are to give you a better idea these apartments are part saha apartments called the lc rutledge apartments what we know so far is police were called out just before three this morning when a suspect fired several shots into that apartment window the 18 year old was asleep in his bed only to be woken up by getting shot several times 
That 18 year old was taken to SAMC in critical condition. I did ask police before they leave, left if they knew had an update on his condition. They said they didn't at this time. As for the suspect, the suspect fled. Police are still trying to gather evidence um, to figure out exactly who this possibly could have been. They are using some of the neighbors cameras, video surveillance to see who that suspect possibly could have been. Any clues in that video surveillance live from the northeast side. I'm Sarah Costa, case at 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a teenage boy is in critical condition after he was shot while walking down the street. Police say the boy was walking with several other people in the 300 block of Burns Drive around 10 o'clock last night, which is near Van Diver and Riddiman. A police sergeant says a car drove by. Someone inside shot into the crowd, hitting the teen. Officers are still looking for suspects. Now to the latest on a carjacking near 35 in Riddiman last night. Police have arrested two people in connection to the taking of a vehicle with a two-year-old inside. Police said the child's mother went inside a gas station to pay for gas, but when she came out, her car and the child were gone. Officers and family members searched the area for about 45 minutes and found the car in front of a nearby restaurant with the child still inside. Drove around and, and was able to find the car and the baby was still in the car, thank God. The baby was still in the car. Grandmother wants others to learn from this mistake. Keep your baby with you at all times because she says you just never know what can happen. She says she's grateful the baby was found safe. Man accused of sexually assaulting a seven-year-old boy in a San Antonio movie theater restroom comes to face to face with the child's father. That was the scene in court yesterday. Christopher Branham pleaded no contest to the assault charge and was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Paul Venema has the story from the court. Prior to sentencing, the child's father, who we will not identify due to the sexual nature of the case, told how the attack has affected his son. He's definitely uh, an introvert now. Uh, he's... Uh, Grade started to go away. Won't do anything by himself anymore. It's affected our entire family. He explained that the family of seven was at the movies here, which at the time was the Rialto Theater on May 19th of 2018. His son returned from the restroom and told his mother of the attack. He is just a sexual predator, Your Honor. He has poor impulse control. He uses drugs, he uses alcohol. Ramsey noted that Branham was out on bond in a similar sexual assault case at the time. He asked the judge to sentence Branham to 35 years in prison, which the plea agreement called for. Branham's lawyer asked for probation. It's pretty clear that he is not someone who suffers from pedophilia, but lack of impulse control. We're asking this court to sentence him to probation, Your Honor. I'd just like to say I'm very sorry. Um, if I could take it back, I could. I would. From the judge, a quick reply. I see no reason to do anything other than order that you serve the 35 years. One more thing. Once he's released from prison, Brennan will have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. 6.08 on your Thursday morning, U.S. Senate resumes its normal proceedings today after voting to acquit President Donald Trump on both articles of impeachment Wednesday. But mixed reactions continue to come in this morning after Republican Senator and former presidential candidate Mitt Romney voted to convict the president for abuse of power. He was the only person to break ranks with his party during the trial. What he did was not perfect. No, it was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security, and our fundamental values. President Donald Trump is expected to address the impeachment trial outcome later today. Be sure to follow KSAT and KSAT.com for the latest updates. In your morning headlines, the House of Representatives will vote today on a resolution to disapprove of the Trump administration's new Medicaid block grant plan. The plan would let states apply for a waiver to reduce Medicaid spending by converting part of the funding into a block grant. The resolution is not likely to be taken up in the Republican-controlled Senate. Two more planes with evacuated Americans from China where the coronavirus started are expected to arrive at military bases today. One of those right here at home, JBSA Lacklin. All passengers will be quarantined for 14 days. There are at least a dozen confirmed cases in the U.S. The death toll in China has risen to 563. 
To hear the detailed plan, San Antonio health officials laid out for housing quarantine travelers potentially exposed to the virus, head over to KSAT.com.